What's up, Prime Fam? What's going on, guys? My name is Brendan Teets. If you're new to the channel, I'm an owner and coach here at Prime Strength, where we make athletes really jacked, really strong for the powerlifting platform and for the beach. So, guys, uh, you're watching the Power Building Season 2, Episode 4, Journey of Mine. And I'm taking you through my own workouts, but what's really exciting is I just got everyone who signed up for the Power Building Season 2 program up and running. So everyone's at home and at the gym doing the workouts themselves this week. And you guys are going to follow along with me as I do the workouts with you. So I'm really excited to start this journey. It's going to be super fun. This was the first heavy day of the training block that Chris and I just finished this weekend. It was really grueling because there's a lot of volume and we're getting back into the swing of training kind of heavy volume again, which has been a while since we've done that. So really excited, exciting time. I want to actually show you guys our top sets without any voiceover over them. And then after I'll come back with the informative content, drop some bombs and some information but I want to show you guys the atmosphere because I think that's going to help the people out at home to kind of give them an idea of how we're going about it. Good move. Let's go. Come on, push it. Nice. So as you can see, there are a ton of volume even on our strength day. So I hit 529 for set of four, and then Kristen had 215 pounds for set of four. Then we had all this fucking back down volume, guys. This was killer. So we had three sets of five, which for week one was a lot for me. And Kristen, I think, even had an extra set. We customized her program to be a little bit more volume inducive. But we're both kind of running a variation of this. Hers is more for her getting, um, you know, focusing on body parts that she wants to bring up, and mine's more focus on my own body parts but it's generally the same template and we're gonna make a ton of gains and kind of show it on the channel so this was a hell of a start to the block for having a top set of 529 and these back downs at 463 for multiple sets of five uh, for me this is huge volume PR territory so like already starting the program I feel really strong which is usually a rarity at this point um, normally it takes me a few weeks to get into the swing of things but after the first couple of days of the program I adapted pretty quickly and I'm already kind of in what I won't call volume PRs, but like ability PRs. The fact I'm able to do this so early is a really good sign of things to come. You know, I was able to blaze through these back downs and I, I was so confident I could even stop and talk there in the middle of the set, ask how many reps I had left because I wasn't sure. I mean, they felt really smooth and good. Kristen kind of had the same experience and she's building up a ton. Um, but what you guys are going to really find at home is that these pro this program is really volume inducive and it's really difficult. We got heavy squats and deads on the same day. We have a ton of ascending sets on the program, a ton of accessory work. So you're going to find that it's really hard to get through some of these workouts and that is the point. That's how you're going to grow. But the main thing you got to do is make sure you don't overshoot. Take the examples of me and Christian here being very modest on week one. You know, our weights are flying up and that's because it's supposed to be that way. We're, we're working more volume and work capacity, not so much pushing it. But by the end of the block, we're going to have an expression week where we get to hit some new PRs on everything and really just push it. So keep that in mind that we're kind of saving it for the weeks to come a little bit later. But let me leave you with this next little informative tidbit. All right, Tip, if you're on the program and you're new to a split like this, I know one of the first things you're going to say is squats and deadlifts and they're heavy on the same day. Yes. The reason I like doing this is mainly because it, it kind of emulates an even tougher standard than what competition will have you do if you compete in powerlifting meets. 
And beyond that, I actually find it's really productive once you acclimate to this for keeping the hips warm. I actually feel stronger once you acclimate or once I have acclimated to this kind of volume and doing both the squat and deadlift in a row because I feel very warm and loose in my lower body, which remember the deadlift is not a back movement. It is a hip extension movement. It requires your lower body muscles more than anything. And so when those are loose and warmed up, I actually get into a better position. Now, with that said, it is hard to kind of uh, do both in a row, especially when I just had a top set on squats with three by five back downs, which is a lot of volume for me, especially being new to the volume phase. So what I'm gonna to do to help get through it is take some sodium. Now you can take it in the form of intra-workout carbohydrates. You can get some chips and a banana for sodium and potassium, or you can take a tri-oral packet. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take half of this. Now keep in mind, I'm a 215 pound, give or take, uh, depending on the morning weight male, and I lift uh, really heavy, okay? So if you're a female who's newer to powerlifting, you might not need this at all to get through squats and deads, but someone like me, I do. Maybe you're kind of in the middle. Maybe you need just a little bit, but the idea here is if you're feeling depleted by the time you're getting to your deadlifts, guys, take a little bit of a tri-oral or some food, you know, potassium, sodium, you know, get a banana, get some chips, and you're gonna feel a lot better going into deads and it's gonna help kind of keep you replenished. Remember, electrolytes are what fuel muscular action, that muscular twitch that is required for high neurological output. Ah, nice and gross. Now onto deadlift. So I can't stress enough how much those uh, sodium and potassium packets are really gonna help you out. Guys, if you're running the program at home, get on top of it because when you have heavy deadlifts and squats in the same workout, especially when it's volume inducive, it gets tiring. But that's kind of the point. We really want to train like that because I find it's better than separating them for most people. Now, I had this top set here of four at RP6. Worked up to, I think this is 573 pounds. Correct my math on the screen. I'll have the numbers up there. But um, really felt good. I was just a little lightheaded and dizzy. So it kind of threw me off because I hold my breath the entire side set on deadlifts. I do this to really maintain position. It's not a tactic for everyone, but I find for me, it allows me to keep more tightness. So I have a very high pace to all my uh, deadlift sets. The tempo is really fast. Kristen's kind of the opposite. I would say Kristen's a lot more patient and a lot more focused on kind of treating every rep like it's a single, as where mine is kind of a consistent, um, you know, high tempo pace where I don't do a hip shoot every rep and I just try to keep my form as tight as possible. And for me, that actually ends up with the highest quality reps. So this was Kristen's top set here. I'll have more information in her own videos, but she pulled 308 for four. To start this block, this was really big, but not gonna lie, we both agreed she probably overshot a little bit there. So we're gonna have to rein that back here these next weeks. And then we went on to our back down sets, which here I had 485 for you know a lot of set of five, a lot of sets of five. Um, a little less volume on the deadlifts and squat, and that's just because the deadlift requires less volume for it to build. Uh, same kind of theme here for, for Kristen. I got these back angles because I think it really allows you to see our back position from a different point of view. I think a lot of people think we pull like, you know, extremely, you know, arch or neutral back, but, but there's actually a good amount of flexion and protraction, both to our upper back and even mid low back. And we really focus on just keeping whatever position we create off the floor maintained throughout the entire lift. So I got a side view here so you can see that as well. So you'll notice my, my back isn't super neutral. There's a lot of flexion to the upper back and protraction and the low back is extended-ish, but there's still a little bit of rounding to it. But notice how the back position never changes and that's the key and that's actually why I hold my breath the whole set. When I find that I rebrace, even when I do it at the top of the lift, I find I kind of lose position and my back bleeds and I get so much more fatigue and then I kind of incur injuries a little bit more easy uh, than if I did the opposite, which is when I hold my breath. Now after that, Kristen had a ton of adductor work. She's really trying to work on her legs this off season. And this is really good for SI joint health and just staying a little bit more stable. Um, she's doing Copenhagen planks along with these Copenhagen thrusts. And then she supersets it with this um, kind of like lying banded uh, hip adduction. So a ton of, of volume and supersets on her adductors, which will really grow that kind of inner thigh region because hers tend to be a little bit smaller. We're trying to bring it out more actually from an aesthetic standpoint. So um, like your quads, 
are not the only thing that are gonna make your legs look bit bigger. If you train that uh, inner thigh, the adductor muscles, they're really gonna give you kind of a girthy look, especially from the front. And I find it's really uh, successful with, with female clients and making their legs pop out a little bit more, which is a goal of Kristen's. Now, after that, I had um, some Hatfield SSB split squats. Now, the thing that I love about this exercise is that it kind of gets all three components that we're concerned with as a power lifter or bodybuilder, which is strength, stability, and mobility in one. So because you're in a unilateral position, your back leg is gonna get stretched through hip extension, and then the front leg is gonna be put into a deep hip flex position uh, kind of in an unstable position. Now, when you do hold with your hands, it removes some of the stability component. And I do this so that way there's a little bit more power, strength, and hypertrophy benefit to this. So it's not completely just a stability and mobility exercise, but it only removes it enough to where there's still a large demand of mobility and stability being required here. So notice my low back. You see how it's kind of arched out, especially at the top? That's a problem. And I need to do these a little bit lighter, actually, and not be so concerned with how much I'm lifting because I need to fix that to get the most benefit out of this exercise. One, my quads will get more of a pump if I don't arch my low back like that. But two, this will have carryover to my bilateral exercises by fixing some of that uh, low back or, or anterior pelvic tilt, uh, low back extension that I deal with because I tend to be a lot, uh, or one of those lifters who's really overextended in their low back and this creates a lot of problems with me with some overuse injury. So this kind of gives my tissues a little bit more capacity, so to say, when I use exercises like this to fix up my faulty movement patterns that's kind of the way to look at this but you still get the benefit of hypertrophy and strength in one so I like it because it blends all of the Bulgarian split squats and things of that nature especially offset split squats you're gonna have a little bit more of a focus on stability and mobility and not get as much of a hypertrophy benefit so you got to pick and choose your tools depending on what you're going for um, Chris and she finished up with some split squats some unilateral ele front foot elevated split squats and she's doing a goblet uh, kind of holding position to really work the interior side a little bit more. So it's gonna be a lot of really uh, low quad, that va uh, vastus medialis oblique, the VMO, the teardrop quad muscle, and you're gonna get um, a lot of stability component here along with your abs activated with that front hold of the weight. So uh, I'll talk more about this on her channel. And then after, you'll see her face here, super enthused. I made her pose because I wanted her to, to kind of show off her gains. Guys, she's been gaining so much muscle. It's been kind of insane to watch. It's like every week she gets a little bit bigger. And it's kind of a trip because she's really not gaining that much fat, even though she has gained, you know, a decently substantial amount of body weight. So it's been a really successful bulk, I would say. And, you know, sooner or later, we are going to cut her down a little bit, get her closer to competition weight and just bring out the, the muscle we built. But for now, she's really just enjoying uh, this, this bulking period. And when I say bulking, you know, it's nothing extreme ever. We never gain a lot of fat. I feel like there's kind of a negative connotation around the term bulk and cut. And I really need to do some videos on that but th those terms are totally fine if you do it correctly now after I finished up with some single limb uh, bridge curls this is because my GHR is not in I did finally reorder a new GHR I got rid of my old one because I didn't like it so I'm doing these instead but when my GHR comes in slash when I go back to the gym on this day because gyms are opening back up here across uh, California um, I will be using a GHR in this place but this is a really good body weight drill to get the same effect you get a lot of low hamstring activation and a ton of core activation actually. That's why my hands are out in front of me. You see how my scapula is protracted? That gets the upper abs to fire on and kind of holds your pelvis into a better position. And you guys can see my low hamstrings popping out. That, that mid to low hamstring muscle belly is kind of getting engorged with blood. You can see it here in the video. So this gives you a crazy pump in the hamstrings, like probably more than you would think. And I bet you'd get way less reps than you think if you tried this exercise at home. So I did show this last year in the power building season. So go check out my videos and formative content around that. But that's pretty much it uh, for this heavy strength uh, kind of lower body day. If you guys want more content like this, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.